And then uh, here we have the Phoenix, dedicated air-to-air -air unit. Uh, so it only attacks air to air. And um, we have one unique ability here, which is called the Graviton Beam. Hit G, grab an enemy unit or a friendly unit. To... So this does a couple things. It, it makes him vulnerable to air to air attacks. I don't think he can. He can. He can't fire back. And uh, yeah, it. I don't know. It's just a little tricky things. We saw one battle report where David Kim uh, went up to some to some queen, and uh, he had a basically had a. Uh, Phoenix from here and, and make it immovable, and, and, and then the Void Ray from there is like, wow, and just started, started attacking with control. Next unit is the Void Ray. Um, and the poor Queen got uh, destroyed. So, the Void Ray is another uh, air unit that can attack both land and ground. What's unique about the Void Ray is that its attack becomes stronger the longer it's firing. So, you can kind of see, I'm going to attack this right here, you kind of see how there's one ray here. And then there's now there's two rays here now stronger and then there's and there's three rays and uh, that's the strongest it can get and it kind of uh, goes through these buildings pretty quickly you can kind of move with it and you can attack again and it maintains its uh, its damage but if you move away for too long then you move it for too long then the charge is lost so it's got some interesting micro there so you kind of you do this sort of thing right here and you're you're attacking this target and then um, you can move into this enemy base hit the key structures. You know, you're doing this thing, you can keep a charge, you can imagine three or four of these rays moving around. And you can just uh, keep doing this for a while. You just gotta make sure you keep your charge. And anyway, there's there's some potential in this unit, and it's pretty interesting. It destroy bases really fast. Another fast base destroyer is of course the uh, the more because it's bonus against armor, it does fifty five damage. That's, that's just a ton of damage, so we'll just we'll just leave it at that. And I think that is just about everything except for a classic, which is of course the worker, uh, a classic which is the carrier. And like when you first see these things in action, if you've never played StarCraft before, and you see someone's gonna make like twenty of these things, you're gonna think, what the what the imbalance is this thing flying around? Like it's just gonna be like it's intimidating. So when I first make a carrier, um, it starts with four interceptors, um, and they kind of fly out real quick, and they attack at artillery range, no less. And your units auto target those interceptors. So you have to do some tricky things to to um, to uh, come back and uh, destroy the actual carrier. And you can just simply um, uh, train more interceptors, more interceptors here by clicking right, and they all queue up. You can see them all go up. So then it gets this four, and its max is eight. It can only have eight interceptors. Um, there's, I do have an upgrade which makes the interceptors launch quicker, which I mean, it launches fast. So uh, that's how that works. And then, um, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's about it. This is a pretty self-explanatory. This is basically um, one of two Protoss uh, shock and awe slash artillery. So uh, it's it's pretty powerful. And it has high DPS. Well, these rocks are actually high armored, but against uh, um, most targets, this is a this is a good unit. But it's also a vulnerable target uh, because it's like this is one hull, and, and when you lose when you lose one of the carriers, uh, all the interceptors die for that carrier. So I see that about right now. So that's that's kind of how the unit works. Um, and you can also right click on this. Uh, as with a lot of abilities, you can right click on this, this little swirling, it's kind of hard to see this little swirling action going on, it means it's auto-cast. So literally, as your interceptors die, the carrier will automatically start producing those uh, interceptors again. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's a powerful unit, uh, just hands down. So I think that's basically all the units here. Um, uh, and I want to talk about, um, let's see, some, some base building. And uh, unfortunately, the minerals are gone here, which is, which is not good for my example here. But we're gonna do a little bit of imagining here, like we've been doing. These probes and these probes. Pretend these probes are actually minerals, right? So this is like a, a um, in addition to the choke I showed you, you know, over here, where you can do some choke shenanigans. You've got some um, the best defense in the game is the photon cannon. Uh, this this defense can attack ground, it can attack air, and it detects uh, cloaked units slash burrowed slash hallucinations slash eggs. So it can it can detect everything that comes in your base. And uh, it has a, it has good range, it has good damage, and it, it uh, it's just a solid all around thing. And it's only costs 150 minerals. You ma you make a forge, and you have access to these, and then you can make the forge right off the bat after your um, after your nexus is uh, after you get enough money. So you know, this would be an early base, right? We have one gateway, and we've got um, these ones won't be here actually. That would be not going down. Um, you got your things, and, and, and the the thing about Protoss is that your units are. These units are tough, like, right? Like they, like your zealot, the basic unit. Where are we at? He's two supply. He's two supply. The marine is one supply, and a zergling is half a supply, right? So this is like a, it's a tough unit, but it's expensive. It takes a long time to make. 
And a lot, of, a lot of Proton stuff is like that. Like you have like tough things, but it takes a while to get to more expensive or whatever. So you know you're going to deal with rushing a lot when, when you first start playing because people want to get the, get the, the easy win, whatever. So you do this. I kind of show with this Apollo pose with Terran. You do it with photon cannons, right? But this is like a self, you know, kind of screw you tool. It's like it's like a defense on one. And there's no way Zergling can get in here. And you have a few zealots here. I'm going to cube some zealots. Um, and you have a, a few Zerglings here, and it's just like. You know, you, you can't you can't get into this base very easily early game when you have like just a couple of zerglings or a couple of marines. And these zealots are out here. And they're doing this thing. I'll explain this little this little effect here in a second. What that is. Um, yeah. So that's one way you can do it. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's basically it. But but the, the thing about the photon cannon is it's like oh I have this great defense. I want to make a zillion of them. And I better not see any bases like you don't make bases like this, right? Like this is just absurd. But, but people are going to do this, so I, I guarantee you, you're going to go in game. And you're going to see someone make more photon cannons than is. It's just retarded. So don't don't do stuff like this because now now you're worthless to your allies and, and your, your opponent's taking expansions. Because he comes in and he says, "Well, I'm not going to deal with all these photon cannons, right?" Um, so a better way to use photon cannons, like on defensive parts, like is it, something like this. Okay, so you have you know this is your base. It's probably a little more advanced than this because we have high Templars and stuff. But you need to use units with your Photon Cannons. Photon Cannons are good by themselves, but you need some other shenanigans to work with this. So, you know, you see the Zerglings coming in right here, right? And there's Hydrovisks and there's Zerglings, and there's just stuff trying to ruin your day. And these these things are firing on, and these and these Photon Cannons are, are defending these ones, are backing them up because Zerglings are close, right? And so you got like a, a nice layer of defense here. And you're, you're laying down storms, you're using T, and you're throwing down storms. And it becomes a much more harder thing for the, for the people to do. Maybe you're throwing down force fields, and they can't even get in, right? Like, they can't, maybe they can't, no, they can't even get in at this point. So you're doing that, and you're storming the front, and you, you know, you make, make life as hard as you can for your opponent. Maybe you just completely block them out, because you're not ready for an attack with this uh, unit and his spells. You do stuff like that. So there's lots of things you can do with photon cannons. Just don't do this stuff like this, unless you're just really goofing around and, I don't know, playing some weird custom game. So anyway, that's, that's something to know about photon cannons, is don't get into this habit, because it, it's silly, but it's not, it's not serious, serious RTS for StarCraft. So, um, those are some spells. That's some defenses. Um, all right, so let's go over. I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain. First off, first off, no, I'll explain this first. All right, like when do you expand? When do you? How do you start your stuff off? This is a skewed um, thing. So I'm, you're not gonna have 13,000 minerals. You're not gonna have an excess full of energy when you start. But you do have six probes, and, and so you start off a Protoss match. And you, the first thing you do is you're gonna grab uh, your probes and send them over. And sometimes you can. I'm gonna slow this down because I'm not amazing at it. But you you send them down. And you, I would grab like half and then send them to another patch, right? Just it's called a split. But in the first one they could split like crazy. But anyway, and you have enough to cube your first probe. So you do that and you're doing your probe thing. And you know I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. So you, you go one probe and, and once your mineral hits 50, you hit another probe. You hit another probe. And eventually, and when you're making your making your base uh, as you're doing this thing in the beginning, ah oh, crap. Rally, make sure you rally point your first nexus so that they immediately go to start mining. Um, you're gonna get to the point where you can use uh, this Chronobus for the first time. Just throw it on your first Nexus, right? And that makes it your probe train twice as fast. Makes your probes train twice as fast. So you can just use that as much as you can. The better, the more you use this, the better. And maybe like a good habit might be to, um, you know, uh, hotkey your Nexuses, all your Nexuses to Group Zero, and then you know because what that what this Chronobus does, it makes the building uh, operate faster. So I'm in my I'm in my uh, my base, right? Well, let me first let me grab some nexuses here. Got nexus here, got nexus here, got nexus here. You got a couple nexuses. You know, it's mid game, late game, whatever. And, you, and you, you're you're training, you're training some phoenixes. You're training some phoenixes here. Maybe a carrier. And you got some zealots coming out. You got some stalkers coming out. Whatever. And you got some upgrades. And you're doing your you're doing your shebang here. And then you go zero, and you got C right. So you hit all your nexuses with zero. You got C chrono boost. You just start chrono boosting all that stuff. You just hit C click, C click, C click. And that's making all your stuff produce faster. And it's easy access. You just hit zero, and then all your nexus are selected. You hit C with smart cast, and you can just start throwing out just for the lulls, whatever. You just make something look pretty. Boom, boom. Got some chrono boost on your face. Oh, now it's out of energy. But you get the idea. You can make your stuff produce a ton faster. That's another bonus that, that Protoss has. Um, so you do your thing, and it's like if there's a, like a solid choke point, like I would say, you know, like half this, like those ramps that we see sometimes in maps, I, I might. I don't know, maybe you go out and build. I would personally build my first pylon right next to my base. Um, which reminds me, yeah, so, you throw down your first pylon. You get, you know, I would build something like this. This is just what I like to do. Make it, like, dicey and hard for my opponent to get in with a few zerglings.